Take a look at this resume. When you see this resume, what do you think? Pretty impressive, right? Sustained excellence. My question is this, is it possible to feel like you failed with this resume? Mary Wise will tell you that it is. How do you ask that question? How can you ask that question? I think if you are amongst high profile, highly successful coaches like we have here at the University of Florida, in the fishbowl that is the University of Florida, and, and winning the championship is the norm, you can get caught up in that, that anything less isn't good enough. And I think early in my career I could do that. And when did it shift for you? Like how many years in? About 20 years in. I know that's a really long time, but, but it took a long, long time for me to truly, oh, I could say it, and I could hear other people tell me, but I never really bought it. And it didn't matter who the source was. One of our colleagues was Billy Donovan, who's a basketball coach, who's a future Hall of Famer, and this is a conversation they had. Billy Donovan, after he won the back-to-back -back national championships, and he and I had a conversation, and I, made, I said it, I want so badly to win it. And he said, you think that will change you. It will not. You'll just be working just as hard to get back there. So why couldn't she hear him? I kept seeing national championships being won around us, and I thought, I'm not equal until I've won that. And that's not true. So Mary attached her importance to achievement. Right? And that's a dangerous trap. And what you're going to see now is some footage from last year. This is the reaction of her team to the point that put them in the Final Four. You're going to see her team's reaction, you're going to see the coaching staff's reaction, and you're going to see how enthused the fan base is that she's built down there. So they went to the Final Four. They won their first uh, match in the semifinals. Mary was crowned National Coach of the Year. And they eventually fell to Nebraska in the championship game to put an end to a magical year. This is one week later in Gainesville, Florida. This was um, maybe a week after the championship. And we were waiting outside at a restaurant. And a, a gentleman, probably older than me, walked by. And he looked, and you could see. And, he recognized me and went, hey, oh, oh, that match. That was really rough. And then he just walked away. And young Mary, for the first 20 years of her career, internalized all those signals. She's going to describe young Mary. Young Mary had horse blinders on. It was just right here at this moment, um, so focused on the win-loss. And, and we had early success, so I felt even more expectations. This is how bad it got. I was this weak in that after a loss, I didn't even want to be seen in public. I didn't want people looking at me thinking, you know, she really should be watching videotape because her team lost. And that, I think that's just ego driven. She has a more refined perspective now. This is one of her favorite quotes. It comes from Barbara Bush. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, not winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a friend, a child, or a parent. I asked her, what would have happened if you would have given that quote to young Mary? Young Mary would have said, well, you're, you'll work hard enough, and you're good enough, and you, can, you, you can still make that phone call and be a good mom. That was ego-driven. So there's a lot that she would tell young Mary. And I asked her to sum it up in a letter. Here's what she said. Dear young Mary, I know that you're judged by that win-loss column. You're hired and fired by it. But you must believe there's something more important than that. And that belief must be part of your core. Because when it is, you'll have perspective to help you get over the losses. That doesn't mean losing becomes easy. It never does. But you can have some perspective. That's the one thing I wish I could give you, perspective. And I encourage you to seek it earlier. It will help you direct your energy to what's important and your players will appreciate that. They'll appreciate seeing that there are more important things to you than just winning. If they feel winning is the most important thing, they'll start to internalize they are only important to a coach if they are successful. And you don't want them to feel that way. 
take it from me. I know what that feels like to have your importance be attached to your achievement. And you don't want to feel that way for the next 20 years. Seek perspective. Love, Mary Wise. And how do you begin the conversation to seek perspective? Well, that's what we tried to figure out, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And it's going to involve the, the bottom half of the quadrant. And so what we do to begin this conversation around perspective is we go to the lower right-hand section, and we ask this question. How does society measure your success as a coach? Think about how you would answer that question. How does society measure your success as a coach? Take a look at these answers and see if any of them apply to you. Show of hands. How many can relate to some of those? The last part of this exercise is probably the most important, and it's the bottom left section. And basically what I do with an individual is I will ask them the same question 10 times in a row. And so the question that I ask is this. What's important to you? And it's geared at life in general. So when I do this activity with a coach, I'll ask, what's important to you? They'll write down the first thing that comes to mind. I'll ask again, and we do that until they get 10 answers. Here's an example. So as you look at this list, just a show of hands, how many can relate to this list on some level? As soon as they get done writing their 10, I'll ask them to take a second, review their list to see if they left anything out. If they didn't, we go to the next part, and that is to rank, in order, your top five priorities. So for this coach, these were his top five. Then what we do with those five, that's what's really important, is we stack those next to how society measures your success. And then I'll ask the question, what do you notice about the two lists? What do you think they say? Not a lot of crossover, is there? So the higher the level you go up, and the more success you amass, what happens? The harder you have to fight to keep what's important, what's important. And that's what this day is going to be about. We're going to have a bunch of conversations on how people have been able to find perspective inside the world of high performance. Thank you all so much for being here.